Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be simplifying a radical expression. We have the sixth root of nine plus four root five, and we're going to simplify this expression. Now, I'll be presenting two methods, but in the second method, I'll also talk about some al alternative paths. So my first method, my first method basically involves using the binomial theorem. So if we have a nice solution for this expression, then the 6 root of 9 plus 4 root 5, we should be able to write it as a plus b root 5, where a and b are rational numbers. Now let's go ahead and take both sides to the 6th power. Obviously in this case you want a and b to be positive because under the radical we have two positive terms. So when we take to the 6th power, we're going to get something like this. a plus b root 5 to the 6th power becomes 9 plus 4 root 5. So we're going to try to find the a and b values from here. To the, you know, the a and b values that satisfy this equation. So to keep a long story short, TCALs. I just made it up. We're going to go ahead and expand this using the binomial theorem. This is what we're going to get. We're going to get a to the 6th power plus 75a to the 4th b squared plus 375a squared b to the 4th power plus 125b to the 6th power plus we're going to get the terms that have a root 5 in it so 6a to the 5th b plus 100a cubed b cubed plus 150a b to the fifth power and all of that is multiplied by root 5. Because some of these terms are going to have root 5, some of them are not going to have it because when you raise root 5 to an even power, uh, you're going to get an integer. Okay, now by comparing this to 9 plus 4 root 5, we notice that the coefficient of root 5 needs to be 4 and the other term here must be equal to 9. Again, to keep a long story short, we're going to solve this as a system and find the a and b values. Since this is a homogeneous system, since this is going to be a homogeneous system, a equals kb will do the trick. If you go ahead and replace a with kb, you're going to get two equations and then factor out the uh, b to the fourth power, divide both equations, it's going to cancel out, so on and so forth. You're going to get the a and b values. To save you some time and trouble, I did it for you and I got a equals one half and b equals one half. Actually here, you can just go ahead and substitute those values and easily verify that they work. Okay, so what is that supposed to mean? Well, I assume that my sixth root is going to equal a plus b root 5, so our initial assumption was that the 6 root of 9 plus 4 root 5 is going to equal a plus b root 5, and we found that a and b are both 1 half, therefore the expression we're trying to simplify is equal to 1 half plus 1 half root 5, which can also be written as 1 plus root 5 divided by 2. And this we can call, I guess, old but gold. All right, awesome. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. Second method is going to be kind of like, kind of looks more painful than the first one, but since I skipped a lot of the steps in the first method, that's why it kind of looks shorter. But in, in reality, it's not short at all. You can try it for yourself. So for my second method, let's first square root the expression, which is 9 plus 4 root 5. Why am I doing it? You'll see in a little bit. So if you square root 9 plus 4 root 5, and I can tell you the motivation behind it, if something is 6 rootable, then it should be square rootable. I hope you, you know you know what I'm talking about. So if you're able to take the 6 root, that means you can do the, the second root, which is the square root, right? So if this has a square root, it should be in a certain form. 
And again, I can go off the route, like I can set it equal to x plus y root 5 and find it there. But I'm going to do it a little differently, and I'm going to use a shortcut here. So, first of all, uh, I want to turn this 4 into a 2. So, go ahead and put the 2 inside, and you can write this now as 2 times the square root of 20, because 2 root 5 is root 20. So, now I want to set my expression um, equal to something like this. I want to have x plus y, but I want to have it in this form, the square root of x plus y quantity squared. And that can be written as x squared plus y squared plus 2xy. So that's why it is important to have a 2 in the front. Obviously, everything is positive, so we don't have to deal with absolute values. So it's all good. Uh, I want to, after writing it this way, obviously, you realize, hey, this is supposed to be 2xy, and this is supposed to be x squared plus y squared if this can be simplified. And this gives us a system, x squared plus y squared equals 9. And if you set to xy equal to 2 root 20, from here you get xy is equal to the square root of 20. And if you square both sides, you get x squared y squared equals 20. So in other words, you are looking for two numbers whose sum is 9 and whose product is 20. And those numbers are easy to find. Uh, for example, 4 and 5, right? Of course, they can switch around too, but that doesn't matter. So I can basically use 4 and 5. Now, I also want an additional requirement. I said 4, right? The additional requirement is that uh, x and y are positive because I I'm dealing with positive terms here. So I can now write it as, since x is going to be 2 and y is going to be root 5 from here, I'm basically dealing with the square root of 2 plus root 5 squared, and that is equal to 2 plus root 5. So that is the result of square rooting. In other words, the square root of 9 plus 4 root 5 is equal to, let me rewrite it so it's more clear, the square root of 9 plus 4 root 5 is equal to 2 plus root 5. Make sense? Okay, now we got that, but we do need the sixth root of our expression, not just the square root, but that can be handled since we know that 9 plus 4 root 5 can be written as 2 plus, 2 plus root 5 squared. The square, root, the square and the 6 root kind of cancel each other out, and we can write this as the cube root of 2 plus root 5. So the next question is, how do I simplify this, right? And that's what we're going to talk about in the next few minutes. So let the cube root of 2 plus root 5 plus the cube root of 2 minus root 5 equal x, and let cube root of 2 plus root 5 minus the cube root of 2 minus root 5 equal y. All right, and then from here we're going to cube both sides for each equation, solve for x and y, we'll get cubics, we'll take care of them. And each cubic is kind of interesting to solve, so I think this will be good exercise. Let's go ahead and take a look. So if you cube both sides here, you're going to get the following. And for the cubing, I, I'd like to use the formula x cubed equals, suppose this is a plus b, a cubed plus b cubed plus 3ab times a plus b. Hopefully that makes sense. So from here, I get the following. a cubed plus b cubed plus 3ab. In this case, it will be 3 times this times this, which is equal to the cube root of 4 minus 5, which is equal to the cube root of negative 1, which is equal to negative 1 and then times a plus b, but a plus b is the same as x. So we get this nice cubic equation, and it's super duper nice, by the way, trust me on that. We get x cubed plus 3x minus 4 is equal to 0. And hopefully you immediately realize the sum of the coefficients is 0, therefore x equals 1 is a good candidate. And if you divide by x minus 1, you're going to realize the other solutions are uh, complex, I think. Or they don't work. All right, in most cases, they're going to be complex. Let's go ahead and take a look at the y value. So we'll, we'll cube both sides again. That's going to give us y cubed minus, actually, y cubed equals uh, a cubed, which is 2 plus root 5, minus b cubed. We have to be careful because this is like a minus sign. Minus 3ab, that's 3 times negative 1, remember that, times a minus b. So everything is minus pretty much because y is, uh, b is negated. And that is going to be the y value. Okay, cool. This quad, uh, I said quadratic, okay, this, this cubic is not going to be as nice as the other one, but that's okay. We can take care of it still. So at this point, uh, we have the following cubic, y cubed minus 3y minus 2 root 5 is equal to 0. We have two options here. 
I know the first one is kind of hard to see, but if you see what I see, that will be really awesome. And here's how we proceed. I'm going to split up the negative 3y into negative 5y plus 2y. I mean, practice, we can do it, right? It can be done. But is it helpful? Extremely. Now take a look at this. I can go ahead and factor by grouping. This is y times y squared minus 5. This is 2 times y minus root 5 is equal to 0. And from here you get y times y minus root 5 times y plus root 5 plus 2 times y minus root 5. And if you take out a y minus root 5, you're going to realize y equals root 5 is a solution. And the other solution is probably complex, non-real. Okay, cool. So from here, I get y equals square root of 5. Like I said, it is hard to see. So let's go ahead and take a look at the other option. The other option for my second method is to work directly. Well, not directly. I mean, you could definitely use cubic formula. It's not super bad, but... I have a better idea since we're looking for nice solutions like integers, rational, so on and so forth. And I noticed that the constant term has a root 5 in it. So that kind of tells me y is probably a multiple of root 5. Why not, right? It doesn't hurt to assume. So why not replace y with m root 5 where m is an integer or a rational number? If you do that, you're going to get the following. 5m cubed root 5. This is my formula. And then minus 3m root 5 minus 2 root 5 is equal to 0. And that kind of, that's kind of verified. You can divide both sides by root 5 and you'll get a nice, nice cubic. And this cubic also has a nice solution. m equals 1 from here because the sum of the coefficients. And that implies y equals square root of 5. So let's go ahead and rewrite this. We Remember, we started off with a system uh, in x and y. Let's go ahead and rewrite the results. So we have cube root of 2 plus root 5 plus cube root of 2 minus root 5 is equal to x and x is equal to 1. And the second one is cube root of 2 plus root 5 minus the cube root of 2 minus root 5 and that is equal to y which is square root of 5. And I'm trying to find the cube root of 2 plus root 5 because remember after doing the 6th root of uh, something squared we got, uh, where is my, okay, yes, this is where it is. Here we go. I got, I ended up with a cube root. Okay, so that's what I was trying to find. This is what I'm looking for. So let's go ahead and add these up. They cancel out. We get the cube root of 2 plus root 5, 2 times, and that's equal to 1 plus root 5. If I divide both sides by 2, then I get cube root of 2 plus root 5 is equal to 1 plus root 5 over 2. And let's just remember that this was the 6 root of 9 plus 4 root 5. And... This brings us to the end of this video. I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.